Okay, uh, enthalpy is what we're going to be talking about today. It's a real word. Sometimes you'll hear it, hear it pronounced enthalpy, but I think that sounds weird, so it's enthalpy. It is the amount of energy absorbed or lost by a system during a process at constant temperature. Please underline at constant temperature. That is an important clue that something is enthalpy. It occurs at a constant temperature. It's used to quantify, in other words, count how much heat is flowing into or out of the system. Is it, is it pressure or temperature? temperature. It's pressure. It's whatever your note says. Yeah, I said, did I say temperature? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, at constant pressure. Sorry. Yeah, it, this is right, not what I said. Constant pressure, thank you. I was wondering why y'all were looking at me. I was like, it's not hard words up there. Okay, so yesterday, or not, not yesterday, but the day before when we talked about the energy diagrams, we said if something was exothermic, remember exothermic is releasing energy from the system. So we said its energy diagram looked like this because it's releasing energy that our products have less energy than our reactants. And so if that's the case, then our enthalpy value is going to be negative. Just kind of like Q was when we said heat. So exothermic was negative. If it is an endothermic reaction, it's absorbing energy. So our products are going to have more energy. Sorry, that's a bad curve. Let's just do that again. Our products are going to have more energy than our reactants. And so our delta H value is going to be positive. So if you see a positive delta H, that means it's endothermic. If you see a negative delta H, it's exothermic. And that's going to be an important concept to have down, not only for our worksheet, but obviously for the test. So I think your next slide actually has that where you write in positive and negative. Okay? If it is a negative delta H, that tends to be favored thermodynamically, meaning spontaneous, okay? Nature likes things in its lowest form of potential energy, and so the delta H being negative is because it's releasing energy, so it tends to have less energy at the end of the reaction, and that is tend to be favored, and they tend to be spontaneous. There are several types of enthalpy. Uh, heat of formation, reaction, combustion, vaporization, and fusion. Heat of formation is when compounds are formed from their elements. This is the abbreviation for compounds. Formed from, their ele from its elements. The heat of reaction is literally a reaction. So it's re different types of reactions. Heat of combustion is burning. So like if I was burning gasoline, that would be, I could figure out the enthalpy of the combustion of gasoline. Vaporization is going from a liquid to a gas. I'm going to put a double-headed arrow because that means I can also go from a gas to a liquid if I reverse that process. And then fusion is going to be liquid to solid. Again, I'm going to use that double-headed arrow because I could go the reverse and I could go solid to liquid, okay? So like the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, but the melting point of ice is zero degrees Celsius. It's the same temperature, okay? It's just what direction are you going? That's why the world doesn't magically freeze outside when you hit zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit because you're actually at an equilibrium because you have just as much stuff freezing as you do melting at the same time. When you're at that exact temperature. Obviously if you get well below freezing then everything freezes or if you get well above freezing then everything melts. But if you stay at that temperature of zero degrees Celsius you have the same amount of process of going both directions. That's why the world doesn't magically freeze over at zero degrees Celsius. Okay. Uh, a thermochemical equation, that's going to be an important thing to know for the test is an equation in which the energy appears in your equation. So it looks like a normal equation, except we're putting some energy. And the energy will either be a product or it will be a reactant. And if you had to guess, if it appears as a product, what kind of reaction do you think you have, endo or exothermic? Exothermic, it's being released, so it should be on the product side, okay? If it is a product and it's being released, we know it's an exothermic reaction. If I want to pull the number out to use it in calculations, 
then what would the sign of it be? Look back, what do we say about exothermic reaction? What's the sign of delta H? It would be negative. So if I was going to pull this out and use it to calculate with, I would say it's a negative 967.2 kilojoules because it's exothermic. And we know it's exothermic because it's appearing as a product. If I were to take this equation and reverse it, okay, here I'm forming water. If I said, okay, what happens if I decompose water? So I'm going to reverse it. So I'm going to reverse it and say I have four water plus 967.2 kilojoules, and it's going to yield four hydrogen plus two oxygen. So now this equation would be endothermic because I reversed it. If it's exothermic, go in one direction. If I reverse it, it's going to be endothermic. And what would the sign of delta H be here? It would be a positive 967. So when I reverse equations, I have to reverse the sign of delta H because it's now the opposite process. So if it's in endothermic going one way, I reverse it, it's exothermic to change it the other way. Most reactions actually are reversible. The majority of reactions are reversible. Any questions on that? Okay. So in this one, I'm adding solid potassium hydroxide pellets and I'm dissolving them. It says following reaction. It's not really a rea reaction, it's a physical change, okay? But when I dissolve the potassium hydroxide, I also get aqueous plus 43 kilojoules of energy. So first of all, what kind of reaction is this? Endo or exo? Exo, because it's appearing as a product, so I know it's going to be exothermic. If it's an exothermic reaction and I dissolve this and I touch the beaker, is the beaker going to feel warmer or cooler? warmer because I'm releasing energy so it's going to feel warmer. Now this reaction tells me that for every one mole of KOH that's dissolved I'm going to release 43 kilojoules. It's exothermic so I'm going to say negative 43 kilojoules per mole. For every one mole 43 kilojoules is going to be released. So this one wants to know what happens when I dissolve 14 grams. So I have to go grams to moles to see how much that would be for 14 grams. So this is way, this is back to our favorite word, stoichiometry. So if I have 14 grams of KOH, I need to get to moles. What do I need to do to go grams to moles? I need a molar mass it, right? So 56.11 is the molar mass of KOH. So I've got it in moles. So now I can see from my from every one mole of KOH and one mole of this is reaction, RXN stands for reaction. I don't want to spell it out. It's a negative 43 kilojoules per mole of, for the reaction. So now I just do my normal stoichiometry, multiply the top, divide by the bottom. And I get that they would be negative 11 kilojoules. So if I dissolve 14 grams, it would give me a negative 11 kilojoules of energy released. Obviously, if I had other things in there like twos or threes, I would use that instead of ones. But it just so happens everything's one. Okay? I believe there is one like that on your paper today. We got all those answers. Look at us. All right, enthalpy and change in enthalpy. You actually cannot measure directly enthalpy. You have to measure the change in. Hopefully by now you know that that little triangle delta means change in. Okay? The change in enthalpy for a reaction would be heat of reaction. Okay? If we're talking about formation, heat of formation is the energy... 
in one mole of a compound, so please circle that. When we are talking about heat of formation, we're forming one mole of the compound from its elements that make it up, okay? The heat of formation for elements is zero. That's very important. Why is the heat of formation for elements zero? Huh? No, elements are already formed. They're already here. Yeah. We're not forming elements. They already all exist in the world, in the universe, right? So they're zero. It's only compounds that have a heat of formation, okay? Uh, there's a table in your book with the values. You will not have to look up the values. You'll always be given the values to find. Like on, today on your worksheet, they're at the bottom. Okay? Okay? Heat of reaction is the difference between the, sub the enthalpy of the substances that exist at the end of the reaction and the beginning of the reaction. The formula looks like this. It's way scarier than it looks. Or than it is. It looks way scarier than it is. So that. I said that backwards. It's, it looks way scarier than it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, when, when Taylor gives me big eyes, I'm like, oh, no, I said that wrong because, yeah. She's, yeah. No, it actually looks complicated, but it's really easy. Okay? First of all, those of you in math, what does this symbol right here mean? Oops, sorry. What does that symbol mean when you see it in a math formula? Sum, thank you. It means summation. You're going to sum, add them up. Okay? Uh, this is number of moles in, and then this is your delta H of formation. Okay? And then it's always products minus reactants. You're always going to list your products, add them up, subtract from the reactants. Okay? That's for heat of reaction. Heat of combustion, formula looks the same way. Because basically, te technically, a combustion reaction is still a reaction. But it's the same formula. We just change out the delta HRXN for delta HC. It's the same formula. You don't have to rewrite it again. It's the same formula. Oh, I keep forgetting to say I'm writing. It's the same formula as the other one. We just changed out the C for the reaction. Okay? So let's do an example. And then you'll see it's not as scary as it looks. It looks like it's very complicated. That fancy little backwards E means sum, summation. Okay, so here's our delta H uh, formation values that we're going to need. And it wants us to calculate the heat of combustion for this. So we're going to start out with delta H C. Okay. That little knot right there, it just means it's standard conditions. But for us, we'll always be at standard conditions. Okay? So we're going to start with products minus reactants. So here's our products. So I'm going to put a bracket here so we can keep up with it. I have 5 moles, that's our N, of CO2 times the value that I have for CO2. So negative 393 kilojoules per mole. Plus still doing products, six moles of liquid water, which is negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. So there's my products. Now I'm going to subtract my reactants. I'm going to go down here because I will run out of room. I only have one mole of C5H12, which is pentane times the value it gave me, 145.7 kilojoules per mole, plus zero. Why did I do zero? Because the elements are zero and oxygen is an element. Now I just need to add all that up and subtract what I need to subtract. So everybody do that in your calculator. Use parentheses where you need them. So add that up in your calculator and make sure you get a negative 3,534. 
You will need to use parentheses on this probably. Did you get that, Taylor? Yeah. Well, um, everything has four, so we went with that. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, let's do exercise two, which I actually don't have, but I'm going to add it in. Okay, so I, this is going to be exercise two. I don't have the slide for some reason. So on your notes, I believe it's two aluminum plus iron three oxide going to aluminum oxide and two iron. Is that correct? Yes. And then the delta H formation of Fe2O3 is, is it negative eight? Eight what? Eight two six. Negative 826 kilojoules per mole. And then the delta H formation of aluminum oxide. Is it 1676? Negative I mean, neg yeah, negative seven, 1676. I don't know why that slide's not there, but it is not. Okay? Yes? I, I just back up a uh, question. I got something from me. Okay, let's look at it in a second and let's see how you're putting it in the calculator. Because if you wrote it down like I did, it's probably just putting it in the calculator wrong. So we'll look at that in a second. Okay, this one will be easier because it's only going to have two numbers, and so we'll try it. So this one is delta H of reaction because it's not burning, so it's not a combustion. So products minus reactants. So we're going to start with a negative 1676 kilojoules per mole. I forgot to write that we only have one mole plus zero, because iron is an element, minus zero for aluminum, because that's an element, plus a negative 820, oh, not, I don't want to write negative twice, plus a negative 826 kilojoules per mole times one mole. So when I do all that, I think it was a negative 850. Is that what y'all got? Kilojoules per mole. So it looks scarier than it is, right? It looks really scary with all those crazy letters, but it's actually really easy. Okay? And then exercise three in a second, I'm going to have y'all do, I'm going to freeze this, y'all can't see it. I want y'all to work it and see if you get the right answer. Yes? Nope, the next one is going to do something different. Has everybody had this before I go on? No. Okay. So that takes us to exercise three. And for exercise three, I want you to work this problem and see if you get the right answer. But I'm going to give you a hint. This time, they're giving you the total for the delta H of reaction, and they're wanting you to solve for what that is. Okay? That's an F. So I'm going to freeze this while you work it. I'm also going to pause the video while you work it, and then we'll turn the video back on. Okay, let's see. Let's freeze, and you should have gotten a negative 103 kilojoules per mole, and that is the delta H of formation for C3H8, okay? I kind of tried to show you what I did with the math there. That was just simple algebra. I added and subtracted what I needed to, and then I moved, and then because it was a negative X, I had to divide by a negative 1 to get rid of the negative X, and so then it becomes a negative 103. If, if you got, how many of you got just positive 103? Because that's been happening today, and that's usually because they don't realize it's a negative x. Yeah. Okay? And that, any questions? Because this is where we're ending for today. I will leave it up, but I am going to stop the recording.